Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session on, on the Google Analytics Connector with Tableau. Uh, the topic for, the, for today is how well do you know your cohorts? So um, I'm looking forward to this session, and hopefully uh, you'll get uh, some actionable insights uh, once we're done. Just in terms of introduction, uh, my name is Faris Alhalu. I am the co-founder and principal consultant with Enor. We are a digital analytics and a marketing optimi optimization consulting firm here out of Santa Clara with offices in L L LA, New York City, Dallas, Tampa, and Brussels. Uh, we're also um, a Tableau Alliance partner, and we work with, with the clients of all sizes from startups to uh, Fortune 25. Um, we love data. Uh, we love data visualization, and I'm, I'm really excited to share um, some insights with you today. So, you know, up to probably, you know, a few years ago, marketers, uh, you know, asking, you know, I need more data. I want to know more about my customers. I want to know more about my prospects. And we fast forward to 2013, and data is everywhere, and we have a whole lot of it. Uh, if you go, I, I was at a conference um, a few weeks ago, and I, I saw this tweet, you know, it's about info obesity. We, we're drowning in analytics data. Uh, I, I love this site, one second on the Internet. You go and, and you see the number of emails, the number of, you know, Facebook posts, the number of comments, and you see in a second how much data is being uploaded into this digital world. Uh, you see... Um, uh, just for less than 20 seconds, almost 9,000 Instagram photos are uploaded, uh, emails are sent, uh, events in, uh, in mobile apps. This is this last year slide is from, um, from Flurry, the mobile analytics platform, um, in, in, the, in the trillions. And, and so as, marketer, as marketers, it becomes really challenging. You know, what do, how do you make sense of all, of all of all of this data? Not only that, but... Uh, you know we have we have you know total visits, total events, total page views in the you know in, in the context of web and mobile and social, uh, but we also have with with many with a lot of the platforms out there. You name it, Google Analytics, you know Omniture, you know Adobe Analytics, uh, Mixpanel, uh, you name it. You'll you can be able to you are able to segment on on your data in so many different ways. So again, that's that's a lot of power, but then it makes it more challenging. You know, for marketers, you know, what do I do with all with all this information? Now, ideally, it'd be really nice to have just one measurement platform, right? Where we have, you know, your marketing channel uh, channels in there. You have your user behavior, uh, you know, your conversions, you know, social, um, organic email, video. It, it'll be really nice to have all that in one sort of one bucket, and then we can slice and dice the data and, and get the insights that we like. That's, we're not there yet, but hopefully, you know, with Tableau, if you are using Tableau, you know that you can do a lot of that in there. And if you're new to Tableau, you know that you can stitch data from different sources and leverage the Google Analytics connector in, in this case to really have that deep insight into what's happening on your web property, uh, the engagement uh, that your users are having, um, are they buying, are they not buying, and then you can segment and you can really um, get, get a lot of detailed information. It'll be really hard to get just out of maybe Google Analytics uh, using the user interface, or maybe uh, uh, you can uh, you you can get that insights. Uh, you won't be able to get that insight by using uh, just one one silo. So our goal here uh, today is really uh, my goal is to share with you uh, some some tips on how to connect data from from different data sources, uh, leverage the Google Analytics connector to to have. A, a, a 360 view of your customers. So when we talk about cohorts, we talk about a, a class of customers, right? A class of maybe prospects, class of members in a community. Uh, and we want to see their behavior over time and identify a, a, a cohort, a class that's doing maybe really well in terms of revenue, in terms of engagement, so we can rep replicate that success. So uh, in, in analytics and in, in optimization in general, I wish it, was, it were all just the technology. You know, you buy, you, know you, you buy a platform and then it does it for you. It really doesn't work that, that way. We have, we have the technology, which is really core, and for data visualization, for connecting data from different sources, obviously Tableau is an amazing platform. But we also need a process, and I'm, I'm going to cover some of that today, and then we need people. So... 
you're listening to this session, you're attending the Tableau conference, that's an investment in your time to learn more about how you can make all this work. And in this, you know, in this um, learning and in this, you know, leveraging technology processes and people, you know, there's some key concepts and, and there's some key challenges. So I want to cover a couple of things here before we talk about cohort. There are two main challenges, and I also like to look at them as opportunities for marketers today. One is segmentation. And, and I, I tell you, we work with clients of, of all sizes, and, and we've been in this business for a long time, over 10 years. And even today, in 2013, we still people see people reporting on, you know, page views and hits and, and just total visits, which is okay. You know, if you want to impress your CEO and say, yeah, I've got you one more, one more, million, one more million visits last month, that's great. But for marketers to be able to improve their business, for, evil, for, for to be able to understand what, what campaign is working and, and what campaign is underperforming, you have to be able to segment. You, you really need to, uh, you know, embody that concept of segmentation. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. And another challenge, and it's a huge opportunity for all of us, is this multi-channel, multi-screen world. All of us today, you know, we have a smartphone, most of us. Uh, we have a laptop or a desktop at work, at home. We have an iPad. So before we buy, and, and you, I hope you appreciate this little graphic here, our graphic designer, she insisted on having a pink pair of shoes. So, uh, but the idea is before anyone, these, it seems that before people go and buy or, or, or even research um, in, in this digital world, we, we, we go through different um, channels, you know, mobile, web, social, to, to learn more about the company we want to do business with. And that creates a huge challenge to, to marketers. You know, how do I connect the dots between these different, uh, you know, disparate systems? So let's talk about segmentation first. Uh, you know, in Tableau, I'll show you just a, just a dashboard here where you can trend traffic, right? Assuming you've connected uh, your Tableau to Google Analytics with a couple of clicks on, you know, on the connector button and then, and then you know, logging in, you should be able to easily pull, say, you know, your traffic trended, you know, for the last, say, uh, four months in, the, in this example. But what I want to, you know, really highlight, and as we start to do our more advanced, uh, you know, analysis, including cohorts, is you know, please don't just report on aggregates, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the data. And again, you can do this very easily in Tableau. So you can create, for example, here, your web traffic, your website traffic by marketing channel. And every site, you know, every client, every business has different channels. In this case, you'll see, for example, you have an affiliate, you have paid search, you know, CPC is just a legacy term from, from Google, uh, email, feed, organic, refer, all these different channels are contributing differently to your overall traffic. So if you look at that, uh, you know, report, that graph on the left side of, of the screen here, you're, we're looking at aggregates, and we're not sure what's causing those spikes, right? We come here when we start to segment uh, by, by traffic uh, channel, by campaign, we are able to know what's contributing the, the best to, uh, to my overall traffic. And again, you can, you can view this in different ways. You can do bar charts. You can do all sort of you know, really cool visualization with Tableau. Um, those of you, who are, you know, who, who, are, who are very familiar with Tableau, you, you can do that very easily, you know, drag and drop, basically. You can also show, you know, try, if, you're trying to get a, if you're trying to get some budget for your mobile site, uh, for maybe uh, get a new initi mobile initiative going, show that trend, and, and this will help you. And I'm pretty sure almost every every other site we look at for our clients, you see a positive trend in terms of mobile. So you can easily, uh, we talked, you know, we're talking about segmentation. Create these reports, create this dashboard in, in Tableau, and and have it at your fingertip, and then export it, share it with your, you know, uh, share it with your um, management, or you know, if they have access to Tableau, they can see it themselves. So the idea is. Please don't just report on aggregate. We can't really tell a, a nice story. We can't tell a whole lot of whole lot of story. But you know, if you're just reporting on on aggregates. Another way to look at segmentation is, say you are uh, you manage a marketing campaign, and I think every other business these days uh, have some sort of marketing email marketing initiative. So you can pull data from, let's say, your email marketing campaign, and then you can also pull data from Google Analytics in terms of traffic from email. Um, let's say it was an e-commerce site in this case. 
what what transactions, you know, how many actual sales took place from from email, and the revenue associated, you know, with with, e with your email campaigns. So from your email source, you're using maybe vertical response, exact target, you know, constant contact, you name it. You can pull that data easily, and the email data will say upload it through maybe a CSV, and then. Um, that data from transactions and revenue you can pull through the Google Analytics connector. And here you'll see um, a very nice view. You'll see each newsletter, January, February, March, and April, you see which newsletter actually brought, you know, people opened the most. In this case, we did really well in March. And then you can see the click-through rate, and then you can associate the revenue and the transactions. Now, this is much more, you know, actionable than just saying, I have one million visits a month, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking specifically at my email marketing campaign. I'm looking, I'm trending this uh, by month, and I'm connecting data uh, from an email channel to my actually, you know, website and transaction revenue, uh, you know, data. So, so that that's really um, uh, insightful. Now, something else you can also uh, report on, and 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 in the in the context of segmentation. Uh, a lot of a lot of us can easily track what happens on the site in terms of traffic uh, traffic sources, in terms of uh, keywords, in terms of maybe top pages, top landing pages, all that good stuff. With a little bit of customization in in, in Google Analytics, you can also identify your visitor type. Say you say you're in, in this case here, and this we have. Um, a, a, one of our clients in, in the education space, and you are required to log in uh, before you access that great material. You could be a student, you could be a teacher, you could be uh, a coordinator, or you could be doing this as a free trial, or you could be an administ ad administrator. So you can add, for those of you who, who are familiar with Google Analytics, you can, uh, when people log in, you can associate that visitor type with a custom variable in Google Analytics, basically. So if I'm a student and I log in, based on that signal I get from the back-end system, I can, I can tag this visitor as a student. When the teacher comes in and they log in, again, I can get that signal from the back-end and pick it up in Google Analytics and store it in a custom variable. So again, instead of saying to my management, hey, we have 613,000 uh, visits right in this month, I have a whole lot more insights now. I can report on my students, my teachers, my administrators, and see uh, their visits. That's good. And then you can dig deeper and look at maybe uh, one engagement metric that is maybe visit average visit duration. That's really easy to do. That's out of the box in Google Analytics. Now again, in Tableau, if you if you want to trend. You know, Google Analytics is amazing. You know, we are we're one of the earlier certified partners with Google. We love Google. They're a great, amazing partner. Trending is is not maybe as um, um, as well presented in Google Analytics as you can do in Tableau. So here, uh, the same data again with the connector, with the Google Analytics connector, I can pull that information. I stored all this in in a custom variable, uh, customer variable number one. And I, again, I see my, my visits and then my, my average time on site. And then I notice this brown here um, segment, which is my student population, is sort of skewing everything else because there's a huge, you know, huge number compared to everything else. So I can you know, easily, again, in Tableau, I can uncheck that segment or that, that custom variable and just focus maybe on, on the administrator, uh, the coordinator, and the teacher free trial segments and see ups and downs and see, oh my goodness, what happened here? We, you know, we, we dropped in traffic. Well, maybe that's seasonal. That's okay. But at least I can see what's going on with each of my segments. So that's really what I wanted to uh, highlight here is, is just don't report on, okay, if you're reporting to the executive team, it's okay maybe to report on aggregates. But for you to move the business you know, forward, to move that needle, we really have to slice and dice the data, and Tableau allows us to do that very easily. So here's, I think, the opportunity for us, again, is with segmentation, you'll have a much more, much deeper insight on what's going on on your side and then with your marketing channels. The second challenge and the second opportunity is this multi-screen, multi-channel world we live in. And this slide is from, from Google, um, Google Think. Uh, you, you see that 77% uh, 
of, of the times that people you know, are watching TV, they're also playing around with another device. It could be a PC or a laptop, or it could be a, sm a smartphone. Even you know, online shopping, it's now it's a, a multi-screen activity. People maybe browse uh, you know, at work, look at something uh, they like to maybe buy for their spouse. They go at home on their iPad, they, and then maybe they go and, and check it out on their mobile phone, and then they end up buying, um, you know, maybe buying in store. So it, it, it makes tracking all that activity, activities really, really challenging. And, and just to give you an idea of um, how prevalent this is, this slide is from, from our partner, uh, mobile analytics partner, Flurry. You see that the data here for, for this year's, you know, last season's um, uh, Super Bowl, where the gray is, uh, where the blue is the actual mobile traffic, right? Um, and you see what, what, what Flurry did is just really cool. They've sort of added this dimension of things that happen during the game, right? Uh, this is where the national anthem, you know, this is where there's a cool, you know, Budweiser ad, uh, what have you. But then you notice during, you know, half time, the halftime show, mobile traffic, this is blue here, took a huge dip. So, so this is where, I guess, Beyonce was performing and everybody wanted to pay a lot of attention to the TV set. Or maybe during halftime people, you know, went to the convenience store, but they're not using their mobile devices as well. But throughout the game, you see that a whole lot of interaction, you know, people watching TV and also, and also, you know, using their mobile devices. So, so that, that's, you know, that's one thing. And historically, and, and for those of us who are, uh, you know, have, have a background in, in analytics, in web analytics, you know that historically we've tracked everything based on, on a session, on a visitor, uh, sorry, on a visit. So I come to a site, I come, let's say um, I go and search on my, on my mobile phone uh, for a trip to um, uh, Monterey, um, California, right? Uh, and then to analytics, to, to whatever system, be it Google Analytics, be it uh, Adobe Analytics, be it Mixpanel, we look as one unique visitor on that mobile session. And then let's say I go on my computer and I make my, my first purchase. And I really like Monterey and I wanna buy, buy another uh, maybe trip two months down the road. I look like another unique visitor. I, if I go back on that same computer, Everything is cookie based. Everything is based on that browser I'm, I'm in. So I, I now look at as a as a second you know visitor, and then let's say later I get some sort of promotion from from that resort I stayed at, and I log in on my iPad, and then to the analytics system I look as a third visitor. So everything is browser based, cookie based. So that one person say Ferris, um, I look like three different people. That's how traditionally, historically, we've, we've tracked things as, as an industry in general, as marketers. Where we are going, we're leaping into the future now and where things are heading, and these slides are from Google Analytics, there's a more emphasis on, on, on user centricity. We, we, we as marketers should really look at how we connect the dots between these different visits, right? So if we wanna do cohort analysis, we wanna understand the lifetime value you know, of visitors, right? The found, you know, foundational to that is be able to at least understand the behavior and track the behavior of unique users across the different platforms, including offline. And with say, if, if again, if you're familiar familiar with Google Analytics, there's a new sort of an entire new system that's now available to us. It's called Universal Analytics by Google Analytics, where you can pull that start, you know, thinking of of users in mind. A lot of the user centric uh, metrics will be uh, natively available in the interface and will be natively available also in the API and, and, the, and eventually we can get them in, into Tableau as well. So start it, you know, we need to start to think about, about visitors, not visits, right? Um, in the old days, way back then, maybe seven years ago, we report on hits, which was really meaningless. And, uh, you know, we sort of uh, evolved and improved and started to report on visits. And we really not need to move into starting to understand um, and monitor and report on, on visitors. So, so those visitors, you know, and, and the challenge for us is to connect those dots across the multiple, multiple touch points. And again, Tableau is an amazing platform for us to do that. We can easily stitch these data points, um, again, 
from Google Analytics, we have a connector. Uh, if you have data in maybe your Salesforce, you can pull it through the uh, Salesforce connector. If you have things in, in Google BigQuery, you can pull that in. Now, I mean, there's a lot of you know connectors, as you know, in Tableau. And where, wherever your data resides, uh, you should be able to connect it uh, through Tableau. Or if there's no connector yet, you can obviously upload through maybe a CSV or what have you. So, so the idea here is for us process-wise, this is, if you remember my earlier slide on, on technology, process, and people, process-wise, we need to build, you know, we need to bring that awareness within our organizations to be able to do this level of tracking. Otherwise, we really can't get to that, um, you know, ultimate view of, of the visitor across these different systems. I want to give you an example of the impact of, of, of these multiple devices and, and multi-screen world. You look at this data here, and, and, and we're looking, let's say, at, at you know, unique visitors' visits and revenue, um, and, and we're looking by, by city. We selected the, the dimension here, the city, and I guess people in Madrid really love <laughs> these products on this site. So a lot of revenue from Madrid. That's awesome. Uh, so what you can do is uh, you can look at this by city. You can look at your revenue, all that good stuff, and let's zoom in. Uh, on Madrid, and let's see what type of um, of uh, of channels or screens people are using, right? And what we find is that this is really, really interesting. Is all that revenue, the 2.6 million dollars worth of revenue, right? It's all happening from desktop traffic. So, so what I've done here in Google Analytics is I've added a secondary dimension. Basically, my dimension here is city. Then I can add, you know, the, the mobile. Um, uh, dimension, and I can see that I have desktop, mobile, and tablet, you know, tablet being the iPad and then mobile, you know, being phones, right, smartphones. So in terms of visits, we see, you know, maybe, uh, you know, about 30% or so of the visits are from mobile, yet zero revenue, right? Or sorry, that was the uni unique visitors, right? But zero revenue. So if I'm a marketer, right, and I'm in, in, in charge of, of demand generation, I'm I think I'm successful in terms of driving people to the site from Madrid on their mobile devices. Yet, there's a huge issue in terms of conversion. I'm getting zero dollars, right? So it could be an issue with the user experience. It could be that we don't have um, the ability to maybe, um, we don't have the capability to, 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 to uh, buy online on, 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 on the mobile site, on, on the mobile app. Uh, you, you know, it, it really depends on, on, on your system. But this is a red flag. Right? I need to do something about it. I'm losing out on revenue here, right? So that, that's something you know, to keep in mind is it, we're tying the idea of, of multi-screen with also the idea of segmentation here, but this is how you find the insights. And again, in Tableau, you can, with the Google uh, Connector, Google Analytics Connector, you can pull that data and you can do more than just presenting in a table. You can do uh, a really nice trending on your visit, on your, on your revenue. So, so keep that in mind. Now, another, another challenge here that we have is that, uh, you know, with, with unique visitors, again, when, when we're talking about cohort, a class of visitors, we really need to be able to pinpoint and, and track people maybe who signed up the week of uh, March 16th and see their, their performance compared to the people who signed up for the week, on the week of the 23rd. So getting that idea of, of unique visitors and, and, and tracking you know, individual uh, users, that is, that's really important. So I'll show you another example where uh, traditionally we've had major issues in tracking unique visitors. So let's say uh, you're, again, a uh, university. You know, some, of, some of the customers we've worked with, you know, Harvard or Mount St. Mary's College or Stanford, uh, a lot of, a lot of, you know, I think all university sites these days. Um, there's a login, there's a portal for students and for professors and for faculty, right? So, once you log in, you're authenticated, and we should be able to maybe assign um, a unique ID for you, and then we can track all that activity once, you know, once you log in into the portal. What I want to show you on the next slide is two different data sets. One by just measuring that you know, generally available unique visitor metric in Google Analytics, and then another set of data where we actually tracked the login, people, you know, after they, they're authenticated. And you'll see a huge difference. So you'll see here on the left-hand side, this is data, this is the data here. It shows, um, I believe this was weekly data for a section of the port portal where we have 
the number of unique visitors as reported in Google Analytics. The trick is we don't have as many students who could be logging into that portal or that section. It's just there's not that many. Uh, and, and then there must be a discrepancy. Now, what happens is in the Google Analytics platform, and again, this applies across all platforms, right? Everything, uh, you know, if, if, if you have a browser on your computer, let's say IE, if, and then if you have the Firefox and you have Chrome, if you go to the same site with these three different browsers, you're going to appear as three different unique visitors. So if I'm reporting on my, you know, again, uh, the generally available uh, metric unique visitors in, in Google Analytics, that's what I'm getting. But in actuality, I only have about one-fifth of, of that population, so something is, is, is wrong. So if I go to my management and I report on, oh, check out, these are how many, you know, how many unique visitors we have, I think that I'm, management is going to lose confidence in me because there's no way I can have that number of students. I just don't have that population. So again, thinking of how that, that goes back to the process of how I track you know, unique visitors, instead of just relying on that metric that's based on, on a browser and a cookie, um, I would track, I will track uh, the student population in this case, or I'll track my members or my buyers. I will assign a unique identifier in Google Analytics, and that will, be, that will take place after I authenticate with my back-end system, right? And then I can report on that data in Google Analytics. And once I have it there, I can you know, visualize it in, in, you know, and pull it into, into Tableau. So, so, so this is, you know, we have all that data. We have some, some messy data, right? And some of us are still, you know, optimizing on, on click-throughs. Uh, some of us, you know, have sort of evolved and, and improved in their reporting on, on conversion, which is re just good. You know, I want to I report on outcomes, on actions that I want my users to take. But, you know, what's awesome here and what we should really target is to optimize on lifetime value. Right, people who come to the site, they come again, they come again, they buy again. If I'm a newspaper, I want to have a loyal following. I want people to come and read and read and read and consume more content, more videos, download white papers, you name it, right? So I cannot do that kind of reporting, that kind of analysis with the traditional way of tracking visits or looking at just click-throughs. I really have to think of you know, cohorts of, of lifetime value analysis, right? And to do that, you leverage a lot of platforms, right? So you can, for example, use something like a mixed panel, as you see in this snapshot here. Um, mixed panel, uh, and again, we're one of their certified partners, so, so we you know, have a really, really cool platform. Out of the box, natively, you, you report on, on cohorts. No extra, no extra reporting, no extra Excel, pivot tables, what have you, it's, it's right there. So at least you can see that data. And if you have mixed panel, you know, set up on, on your web property, then you're in good shape, no, you know, nothing else to do. Um, if you are using Google Analytics, uh, there's some instrumentation required. So you can maybe report on, you timestamp the day of the purchase, for example, or you timestamp, you know, you give a unique ID to your, to your, um, to your visitor, and then again, you timestamp um, in a custom variable when, when the transaction took place. And once you have that in a custom variable, as you see in the second uh, slot here, you'll see that we can then report, do that cohort analysis in, in Google Analytics. Now that's, again, it does require some customization, but once you've, and, and, and I do have a blog post, a reference for you on how to do that. But assuming the implementation is taken care of, you have that data in GA, then you can report on it. So that's, that's one thing. Now there is still a challenge. And that is that multi-screen world that we live in. That's the reality today. So if you are using, uh, pulling data in Google Analytics from, from, uh, from your website, and that's really required to, to get to, to the cohort analysis and to automate it in Tableau, which is really what I want you to do after this session, is this is a bit of that prerequisite work that's needed, is that you track your unique visitors when they authenticate, you put a timestamp, and you see, for example, here that you have one user ID, the same user ID, it's one customer, and they've come to your site a number of times, and they've done a lot of transactions, and you can see this, by, but they've, they've, come in, you know, they've come in on different browsers. So that, that data is available from the web, and we can pull it directly into, into Tableau. 
Now, let's say you're, you have a mobile app and you're running, you're running Flirty on that um, or Mixpanel on that app, then obviously that same process has to be in place. I cannot do a cohort analysis if, I don't, if I'm not tracking users and tracking you know, user IDs and I'm tracking uh, their data purchase. So again, with, with a little bit of you know, eventing in, in Tableau, you can pull that data um, and then we can later st stitch it. Um, uh, sorry, you can pull that data from, from Flurry and then you can stitch it in Tableau. Now also if you have some, let's say, uh, brick and mortar, you have a store, people come in and buy, but you have your process in place, um, you, you're tracking the subscription date or the purchase date, you're tracking your customer IDs, then and only then we can pick all those customer IDs from the different you know, data sources, from the web, from mobile, and then from offline, and we can put it all together and we can use that customer ID as the key. This is the primary key that we're gonna stitch all this together and, and, and then report on it. You can do this in a database, you can do this you know, in the cloud, like if you're using Google you know, BigQuery, but we wanna show you how to do it in Tableau. Now the cool thing about this is, if you notice, this little extra dimension here called gender. So say you are not tracking gender in your mobile app or you're not tracking gender in, in, on your website, but because we have that primary key, which is the user ID in all three systems, once I connect this data in Tableau, this dimension is going to be available, and then I can I can I can see that across you know um, across um, my mobile my 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 uh, my website data, not just only in my offline data. And and just a side note, uh, with the dimension dimension widening uh, feature that is uh, soon to be available um, in in Google Analytics, you can put that data back into your Google Analytics report. This is for those of you who are advanced users of, of GA, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But basically in terms of stitching all this together, once we have that primary key available in all our systems, uh, uh, cohorting or the cohort analysis is gonna be relatively easy. And here's, here's that picture. Here's what we wanna get at the end of the day in Tableau. I have my data, I pulled down my data in uh, from all these data sources, and I then see it, I, I, then I can show it here in Tableau, and I can basically look at these different colors represent the date of the first purchase. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm doing the analysis on. You know, people come and buy the first time, and then they come back and, and, and buy again and again and again and again. And I want to know, the question is, one of the marketing questions is, you know, based on the date of purchase, that first purchase, uh, which segment, which class, which, you know, cohorts are, are doing better than others. And you'll see here that my blue, I guess, cohort, sorry, my, my red cohort, uh, they're doing much better. They buy they buy more on the first first time, and then as they as you know as we move on week one, week two, week three, we see um, a, a, a very positive trend, uh, and they're doing better than people who signed up um, in in previous weeks. Now this is this is where you know you can take this and again in Tableau you can drill deeper and look at maybe the channel that brought these I'm going to call them the red cohorts here. Where, you know maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm just missing out because I stopped that, I turned off that campaign and I'm not realizing that it was really a good campaign that I need to you know, re-enable to bring me this high, these high quality visitors. Not only they convert and they do well on their first visit, but throughout their lifetime value, you know, throughout their lifetime you know, cycle, they're just doing much better. They're overperforming um, any, anybody else. Now to do this, again, without Tableau, you do a whole lot of work in Excel a whole lot of work, a whole lot of pivot tables, a whole lot of, you know, maybe a couple of macros as well. Uh, but in Tableau, we have, we have a technique where you can not just show it, but you can also actually really automate this whole entire process. Um, you know, I won't go into the, the specifics of, of every, you know, step, but really there's, you know, four or five steps and you're done. So, you know, you, you, you make sure you have your core data elements, your, your primary key and your date stamp, available in, in your Google Analytics data, right? Uh, make sure you're on Tableau version eight and you have the, the connector available for you. And then what you do is you import data from Google Analytics into Tableau with the connector. Then you upload your other data sources in this case and our here use case of Flurry and, and offline data. And then 
you, you do the Tableau, you run the Tableau um, analysis configuration that we've outlined, outlined, outlined in this post. And there's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, you just, you know, if you're storing data in, in a custom variable in Google Analytics, and I want to show you this actually, I want to show you this um, uh, real time in, in, this, uh, in this link. If you're pulling this data in, tab, in Tableau, uh, you just bring it in with a connector. And then with, with, with Flurry and off offline, uh, you do it with CSV. But some formatting is required, and uh, I apologize for not having that, the browser open, but I will do it right here, and it should be able to see it. You'll see that uh, there's just a couple of steps. One is you, um, you change the date format. That's really what's important. Uh, in, in, in Google Analytics, you have uh, the date comes in as a string. And then you know you want to change it to the Tableau date format, uh, and then basically you subtract uh, the date of of the um, of, of of the the cohort date from from the transaction date, and then you have your your data readily available. And obviously you know you have you can add the the different in the four the four different segments that we've identified earlier. Uh, so there's not not a whole lot of you know programming, uh, no more pivot tables in Excel. You pull the data into Tableau. You do a couple of configuration, uh, quick setups in terms of date format and, and and the data diff here, and then you have your data for you. And then you can add some colors and you can present it maybe in a different way. But the idea here is, and this is really key uh, in, into optimization, into analytics, into measurement, is that you know we want to automate. All, all that reporting that we do, we spend a whole lot of time on that. We want to, to the best of our ability, you know, automate that so that we are ready to, you know, jump into analysis, into slicing and dicing the data, finding those insights, and, and going back to our maybe design team, our demand generation team, to our, uh, you know, promotion team, and say, you know, here's what, what's working and here what's not. And, and this, these, you know, few steps here will help you automate this entire process of getting your cohort, you know, analysis, your cohort reporting and cohort analysis. So, you know, I hope you found this this useful, and I hope you go you go back to your office and after you take maybe a couple of. I know you're, 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 you're there's a lot of data, a lot of information, a lot of a lot of information going on in a conference, and then you're listening to maybe all all these all these um, sessions. But you know, go and try this. You know, if we don't use our muscles, um, they'll you know they'll atrophy. So 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 you know, if you have a good analytics today installed. About half of half of the web is using Google Analytics today. You have that connector ready for you in, in Tableau 8. Um, maybe you need to do some instrumentation in terms of in terms of adding that primary key and that that date stamp. So work with your marketer, with your um, you know uh, web analyst, and get that data in Google Analytics. And from there, it's readily available to you. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to it. You have the information automated available to you in Tableau, and then you can you can go on your on your optimization way. So um, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I appreciate it. You can if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out, and I'll be more than happy to help.